So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Phong, and uh, my co-speaker is Hui, and we represent the floating cheeses project uh, in this conference. Uh, full disclosure, we are not the data scientists. So our view on uh, the uh, research software might not be entirely accurate. And also, uh, our purpose here is not to communicate our project, but to communicate the ideas around it. Uh, so first, uh, we will try to have a common understanding on uh, the research software. So as we understand it, uh, the purpose of research software uh, is first to have a replication, which means uh, we try to have um, some tooling to uh, operate on a data that will always give the same exact same result every time. Uh, this way, uh, people uh, who try to replicate our results or read our work can, uh, uh, how to put it, uh, they can uh, verify our work and verify our thinking and logic along with the way that we analyze data. In addition, uh, <clears throat> the research software is also for reproduction. So <clears throat> production is uh, slightly similar to replication, but uh, we don't use the exact same machine, not the exact same software, not the exact same environment, uh, but in a similar method, we still get the, the same answer from the uh, similar set of data. And last, uh, this is uh, considered to be the most important one is the reuse and remix uh, of the software. <clears throat> we view it as uh, the way for the research software to be used in uh, future experiments by uh, the next uh, scientists that uh, are interested in the research. Um, because science is, well, at least the way you view it, is continua uh, continuous uh, development and uh, without the reusing the research software uh, now future researcher will end up reinventing the wheel and uh, we will not get the progress that we want uh, so these are the requirements for the research software and uh, we are concerned in with how to uh, best facilitate researchers for the tasks uh, in the scope of this talk, we will only uh, consider the uh, dependencies management uh, and the final uh, delivery of the research software. And with that, uh, currently there are currently there are two ways. Uh, one, uh, to uh, get the uh, libraries. One is through Python packaging tools. And in the scope of uh, the PyData conference, we try to uh, target the Python research software. And the other way is containers. So with uh, Python packages, then uh, for replication, then it's pretty much uh, always uh, work. Uh, of course, if the machine is different, then uh, you will not get the exact same answer. But uh, with lock, it uh, almost ensure that the operating system and the uh, architecture is the same. With reproduction, it's mostly the same. Uh, <clears throat> but without locking the dependencies, uh, there's a risk of getting uh, dependency not uh, resolved in the exact same version. And we can have slightly different behaviors, but uh, it is possible to work around them. Although uh, it's my worth note that uh, uh, <clears throat> with uh, future releases of software, uh, many things might change, and uh, the uh, the libraries that are resolved after uh, installing the libraries can end up not working well together. Uh, for reuse and remix, uh, it's still on the same track. Uh, it might work, but 
uh, there's a high chance that the dependencies on different research software that we try to use together might uh, not work together at all. They might have, uh, they might declare uh, completely conflicting versions or that they uh, do not work, but we do not uh, have the information on that. And uh, it's rather uh, not, not optimal. Um, so to uh, discuss a little bit further on the dependency management, uh, we would like to view on the uh, upstream and downstream perspectives. So the upstream developers are those who create the libraries, who also the developer of uh, the final applications or software, like the researchers. And in here, we <coughs> uh, illustrate them <laughs> as uh, the, the, the smaller rivers uh, in blue. And the downstreams are the ones that do final packaging, do the integration of uh, the, all the libraries and the final application to make sure that everything works well together and we denote them as the purple-ish red in here. So from the downstream perspective, they can see all of the software and how they work together. But from upstream, they only see a fraction of the picture. And of course, uh, with all that, after all the packaging, we can give them to the users, the one who uh, will be running or rerunning our software. So for <coughs> upstream developers, the only thing that you really need to do is to write good software. And we know that we do. And that's all. And pinning dependencies is uh, really, really not encouraged because uh, the more restrictions you make, the less likely that we can uh, <clears throat> we can make your software work together with others. Um, plus, for registries like PyPI and Anaconda, um, they are centralized registries and they can have downtime uh, at any point. And the single point failures can cost uh, you time and effort. So with containers, uh, replication is intent usage, so it uh, would work really well. But for reproduction, uh, if you give the complete uh, instruction to rebuild it like a Docker file, uh, then it might work. But uh, the complexity could hinder the ability to reproduce the container without the exact copy. Uh, and we also have the inherent problem with the registries because that's how the software are downloaded. For use and remix, then you can't really use uh, container software together at the library level of Python. So hi everyone, I'm Hui. And so uh, we propose a solution to this problem. We call it a floating cheese. And this, these are Python binary distribution. And uh, we, uh, uh, it is platform unique and uh, singly version. Uh, Tom, can you uh, switch the slide? Uh, and uh, it is uh, backed by IPFS, and they are often found in the flying circus. So uh, thanks to being uh, singly version and platform unique, which means given a version and a platform, you will have only one version for each package. Uh, it is easy to integrate and upgrade other packages. and. Uh, Thanks to IPFS, it's also easy to host the host your own instance of uh, the distribution. And uh, the uh, floating sheet is orthogonal to containers, and it is not meant to replace, but to adhere to PyPI. And in fact, we uh, use uh, the wheels and the metadata from PyPI to write a package declaration with uh, this format. Uh, to, and uh, thanks to, uh, thanks to uh, these advantages, we, uh, you will find it's a, a pleasant experience to replicate and reproduce, as well as reusing and remixing. So how do you use the wheels from floating cheeses? Uh, firstly, you get a, a CID from our release uh, on uh, this link, and then you set up an IPFS gateway. 
after that you configure pip to uh, to download the wheels from the link the uh, IPFS gateway after that you uh, you can uh, start using the packages uh, you can have the project by uh, running a mirror, by uh, pinning the IPFS CID, and and you can also contribute at, uh, uh, to the project as it links by uh, uh, by a package uh, by declaring the packages. Uh, if you have uh, any further questions, you can ask us at uh, our mailing list or our matrix chat room or right after this uh, speech. Thank you for listening. Uh, so we have a short demo of uh, how we will uh, try to use the floating cheeses in production. Uh, so first, we will uh, have the uh, cryptographically signed uh, tags here with the uh, CID, IPFS CID, they are content identif identifiers. And uh, if you open this, uh, and they are <coughs> they are the uh, PF, the PEP uh, 503 uh, repository, and you can use them immediately with the uh, with PIP or any other client. So what I use here, for instance, is I uh, give the index URL, and I will be able to install any package. So, for instance, if I want to install SciPy, then it will download from it and installed normally. And uh, uh, with this CID, we will ensure that, ensure also the CID of every uh, children inside of the repository. So uh, you only need to pin the parent repository and you would also pin every single package inside of it. And that's the general idea that we try to uh, convince. So instead of pinning individual packages, we can pin the repository and this repository can have upgrades and the upgrades will be seamless from version to version. Uh, so I think it's time for Q&A now. Oh, okay. This is a question from Anna Gut. Uh, do I understand correctly that you have a copy of a specific version of a repository? Um, I'm just wondering how to compare it to uh, uh, PIP ENV. Uh, the first one, yes, uh, you understand correctly that is a copy of a specific version of a repository. Uh, the difference uh, from the, a project like floating chases and uh, the automatically generated hashes in pipenv is that uh, with floating chases, the packages are declared by human, uh, which means that we have a downstream, a team of downstream uh, packagers that will declare and check if the packages uh, will well integrate with each other. And uh, the dependencies man management will not uh, need to be handled by the uh, packages users, which means that they are researchers or developers. They will just uh, get a, a repository version and they are done with it. OK, so uh, thank you, Fawn and Kwon, for um, the presentation, and now let's see if we have the next speaker on the line. Thanks a lot again. Thank you.